baking, frying, slicing, saucing. On The Chef Show, John Favreau and his cooking buddy, Chef Roy Choi, do it all. But do you know the real story behind this unlikely duo? Come on into the kitchen and find out. When he's not whipping up mouth-watering dishes, from succulent brisket to amazing breakfast burritos on Netflix's The Chef Show, John Favreau's got a pretty cool day job, producing television shows like The Mandalorian and films like Avengers Endgame. But that's not all. He also directs blockbuster films like Iron Man and acts in them too, appearing in the latest Spider-Man franchise as Spidey's mentor and Aunt May's sort of boyfriend, Happy Hogan. Are you dating? Yes. <sighs> what? But Favreau's Hollywood history actually goes way back, from directing the now classic Christmas movie Elf. Best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. To a slate of other family-friendly films, like Zathura, The Lion King, The Jungle Book, and Cowboys and Aliens. As a producer, he worked on the iconic Avengers series, as well as the successful Disney television shows, The Book of Boba Fett, and of course, The Mandalorian. As an actor, he's appeared in many films too, including Rudy, Swingers, The Iron Man series, and Spider-Man. He even had a recurring role on the iconic television series Friends, playing Monica's rich boyfriend Pete. But then in 2014, Favreau shifted focus, directing and starring in his own passion project, a small, personal movie called Chef. The film, which came out in 2014, tells the story of a temperamental but talented chef who loses his job, then rediscovers his passion for cuisine and life when he buys a food truck. And even though Chef was indeed small and personal, it also featured plenty of big-name stars in major roles, such as John Leguizamo, Scarlett Johansson, Sofia Vergara, Dustin Hoffman, and Robert Downey Jr. To ensure his film was authentic, Favreau turned to Roy Choi, a real-life chef best known for his legendary Los Angeles food truck, Kogi. Choi, a Culinary Institute of America-trained chef, has written cookbooks, created a line of bottled sauces, and opened well-received restaurants in places like Los Angeles and Las Vegas. And when Favreau brought him on as a consultant for the movie Chef, a friendship was born. Luckily for food fans, their partnership ended up continuing far beyond the film. In 2019, inspired by the success of Chef the film, Favreau and Choi created The Chef Show for Netflix, a spin-off which would follow Favreau and Choi on a culinary odyssey. The show caught on with viewers, who were immediately hungry for more. A second season debuted later that year, with a third season following in February 2020. Throughout the series, Choi and Favreau were joined by celebrity friends and chefs in a variety of locations, from Los Angeles to Las Vegas to Atlanta to Austin. The Chef Show serves up a feast, with an eclectic array of guests, cooking demonstrations, new techniques, and of course, food. And Favreau had this to say. So much of our culture lives in our food, and if you ate something growing up and you have a taste for it, you seek it out, that's going to keep that alive. John Favreau had never met Roy Choi when he first approached him about serving as a consultant on his 2014 film Chef. But as it turned out, bringing Choi onto the production was more than Favreau had bargained for. Because while Favreau was used to being the boss on his movies, Choi took charge in the kitchen, insisting that Favreau learn about the less glamorous side of cooking. In other words, grunt work. He even assigned Favreau to an eight-hour prep shift. But all of this work was necessary for viewers to believe that Favreau's character was, in fact, a great chef. Choi explained his reasoning in an interview with the Los Angeles Times. I told him, if I'm going to do this, we really need to honor the craft and the code of cooking. You're not coming into my kitchen until you're trained. You can't make a movie about a chef if you don't understand what it is to be a cook. It's okay. It's okay? You have to learn. You have to learn this technique. The working relationship on the film Chef evolved into a behind-the-camera friendship for John Favreau and Roy Choi. And when the filming ended, the friendship continued, though it had changed, as it no longer involved cooking together. This, as Favreau told People magazine, was because while cooking was Choi's job, his job was making movies. But then, Favreau had an idea. While reprising his role as Happy Hogan in Avengers Endgame, he would cook for people on set and film it too. Favreau took what he had filmed and began working on it like a documentary, but as he later confessed to Eater, at first, he didn't really know what he was going to do with the footage that would later become The Chef Show. We ended up doing enough episodes to actually deliver a season, and it turned into a Netflix show. The Chef Show became this thing that took on a shape through the editorial process like a documentary. On the first episode of The Chef Show, Favreau goes into the topic further, 
telling guest Gwyneth Paltrow how much he had missed cooking with Choi. When they were filming Chef the Film, Roy Choi generated all of the fabulous recipes that John Favreau's character, Carl Casper, cooks on screen. Given that Choi created the dishes and then taught Favreau how to prepare them, it shouldn't be surprising that they recreated some of them for the chef show. These dishes included the berries and cream Carl sells from his El Jefe food truck, the chocolate lava cake he hated to serve at the restaurant, and the glorious Ilo Eolio pasta he so lovingly created for Molly, played in the film by Scarlett Johansson. In an interview with Food & Wine, Choi shared some deep-dive chef movie trivia about this pasta dish, including the reason he had Favreau's character thinly slice the garlic instead of simply crushing it. It was, Choi said, to show how much he cared about this pasta. During this episode of The Chef Show, after they completed the dish, nicknamed Scarlet's Pasta, Choi tells Favreau that the dish is best when it's plated and eaten immediately after it's cooked. Otherwise, as he puts it, rather dramatically, the magic dies. Throughout his career as an actor, producer, and director, John Favreau has worked with some serious Hollywood heavyweights, from Will Ferrell to James Caan to Beyoncé and beyond. As a result, he's been able to entice his celebrity pals to lend their star power to The Chef Show. So far, guest stars have included funny man Seth Rogen, celebrity chef and ugly delicious host David Chang, director Robert Rodriguez, comedian Bill Burr, plus Robert Downey Jr. and Gwyneth Paltrow. Chatting with Variety, Favreau said that after working together for over a decade, his Marvel movie pals have become like family to him, something that's clear to any viewer of The Chef Show or even Spider-Man. This is you. Oh, we're neighbors? We're not roommates. Shoot up. In an interview with Variety, Favreau revealed something really cool, that it was actually Paltrow who first brought him together with Roy Choi. My first time eating Kogi barbecue, the gourmet Korean taco truck Choi created, was because Gwyneth brought the Kogi trucks to the set of Iron Man. The first screening we did of Chef was at her house, where we cooked with Gwyneth. Paltrow has had a long relationship with Favreau, who's been her director in two Iron Man films and her co-star in numerous other Marvel movies. So it's really not surprising that she was one of the first celebrity friends he invited to appear on The Chef Show. Paltrow's appearance, however, was memorable not just for the meal, but for her hilarious admission that she'd been in so many Marvel movies, she literally couldn't remember them all. During their conversation in the episode, Favreau casually mentions being with Paltrow in Atlanta while they were filming Spider-Man Homecoming, and Paltrow's response? Spider-Man? Well, yeah, we were in Spider-Man together. Remember we were on Spider-Man? We yeah. weren't in Spider-Man. Yes, we, yes, we were. But even after Favreau insisted that she was in Spider-Man, Paltrow continued to insist that she wasn't. I was in Avengers. Then, as Favreau keeps talking about her appearance in the Tom Holland film, Paltrow suddenly remembers. That was Spider-Man? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Paltrow ended up addressing her mistake during a good-natured appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live, laughing at herself and admitting she had just gotten confused. As she told Kimmel, There's so many of these wonderful Marvel interconnecting movies, and I thought that it was an Avengers movie, but it was not. It was. As Roy Choi told Eater, the chef show was really about going back to the essence of the original cooking to camera shows. He went on to name drop cooking show pioneers like Julia Child and Paul Prudhomme. As Choi described it, the appeal of these shows lay in their simplicity. You just put on the camera, get some food, start cooking, invite some friends over, and see where it goes. And as John Favreau told Eater, chefs are all teachers. You're being shown little things. You're picking up lessons all along the way. And being able to ask somebody who's an expert questions is such a valuable thing. I guess we figured if we liked it, other people might like it too. But if Favreau sees Choi as a teacher, Choi sees Favreau as an A-plus student when it comes to picking up kitchen techniques. As he told People Magazine, I have seen John go from not knowing anything in that specific criteria to being proficient at it in literally five minutes. That is superhero level. Chatting about the chef show with Eater, John Favreau and Roy Choi were asked to single out their favorite moments. For Choi, the first thing that popped into his mind was filming with barbecue guru Aaron Franklin at the Hot Luck Festival in Austin, Texas. According to Choi, he was given the privilege of unlimited access to all of the smokers. For his top pick, Favreau settled on the episode when he worked in one of Choi's kitchens. Not only did he get to learn the intricacies of Korean cuisine, he totally geeked out when he met one of his food idols in that episode, celebrity chef David Chang of Netflix's Ugly Delicious Cooking Show. As Favreau explained, to be working in one of Roy's kitchens cooking Korean food and have David Chang come in and they both taste my cooking and think that it tasted good? 
To me, that was a moment that I'll never forget. That's good, John. Yeah, you could open a shop with just this. After its debut, reviews for The Chef Show were glowing, bordering on ecstatic. Collider called the show an absolute delight, describing the star's chemistry as infectious. And the London Evening Standard pointed out how The Chef Show doesn't feel indulgent. A review from Uproxx doled out even more accolades, praising the series for being fun, light, and hunger-inducing, while also inspiring a fair bit of friendship envy. With reviews like that, it shouldn't be surprising that The Chef Show has earned a perfect score on Rotten Tomatoes achieving a coveted 100% rating. Jon Favreau first burst onto the Hollywood scene in the 1993 football movie Rudy, playing Sean Astin's tutor. His next big break came alongside pal Vince Vaughn in their 1996 indie film darling, Swingers. And while it's obvious that Favreau has been comfortable in front of the camera for a long time, the same cannot be said for Roy Choi. In an interview with Grub Street, Choi admitted he's definitely not the typical extrovert that might seem destined for television stardom. Hey, what up, y'all? Welcome to food vlog number 13. It's kind of fitting that the taco finally made it to the vlog on numero 13. But Choi also went on to say that the desire to appear on television is actually something that's been brewing inside of him for a long time. And only recently has he felt ready to embrace the challenge. As Choi explained, I've been a shy kid for almost four decades now of my life, and I'm ready for the second chapter. I've got a lot to share with the world. I just didn't know how I could share it. It just all came together in one year, and I'm not going to shy away from it anymore." Choi credits Favreau with exposing him to the world of entertainment, admitting he'd been approached by everyone under the sun to make a show, but that the time wasn't right until the chef show came along. Cooking is one of the most zen things. You have to be there. You have to be present in the moment. There are many reasons why Jon Favreau has been so successful in film and one of them is the meticulous approach he takes with his work. And he's applied the same trait to The Chef Show. As Favreau told Grub Street, I've watched all these episodes a dozen times in the process of making and defining the show. Every little thing, a lot of care went into it. Favreau compares the process of creating The Chef Show to that of cooking a spectacular meal for friends, telling Grub Street, it's just really nice to share. It's like you cooked a meal you want to eat and now you've invited people. One aspect of The Chef Show that sets it apart from other television cooking shows is its warts-and-all approach. One episode, for example, shows Roy Choi and Jon Favreau making a batch of New Orleans beignets, using a pre-packaged mix from the Big Easy's famed Café du Monde. But when Choi bit into the beignet, he realized the mix was old. He ended up tossing the whole batch in the trash. It's moments like this, Choi told Uprox, that underline the central message he wants viewers to take away. Not everything in the kitchen is going to go perfectly, but that's okay, it's all part of the experience. When viewers see Roy Choi on The Chef Show, he's always equipped with a small but essential array of professional kitchen tools. And this is no accident. In an interview with Hypebeast, Choi revealed the contents of the mobile cooking kit he keeps packed away in a nondescript backpack carried with him at all times. The kit includes a set of knives he splurged on for chef, as well as a wooden spatula. As he told Hypebeast, Food to me tastes better when cooked with a worn wood spoon or spatula. I feel like it transfers soul or maybe splinters. Also on hand, in Choi's cooking arsenal is an array of seasonings, including small bags of salt and pepper, as well as three small mysterious seasoning tubes labeled spicy, cheesy, and sweetie. But the most important item in the bag is a special chef show coin symbolizing his friendship with Jon Favreau. As Choi told Hypebeast, the platform he's been given has given him a new zest for life. He loves being involved in something so honest and meaningful, working on a show that inspires people to cook. The coin, he explained, reminds him to never lose sight of the truth. Make the recipes that you're basically. actually going to cook. Gwyneth Paltrow and Robert Downey Jr. weren't the only members of the Marvel Cinematic Universe to appear on The Chef Show. One episode featured Spider-Man Homecoming star Tom Holland, and when Roy Choi learned that Holland had never eaten a raw oyster on The Half Shell, well, he instantly made it his mission to change that. In the episode, Jon Favreau and Choi are visiting a seafood restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia, along with Holland. Avengers Endgame co-director Anthony Russo and Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige. After Holland selects his oyster, Choi fixes it up with some cocktail sauce and hands it over. That'll be your first oyster. Can you just slurp it down? Yeah. Oh, really good. As you can see, it was a great success, and for Choi, introducing Spider-Man to the joy of raw oysters gave him some extra cred with a special someone in his life. As Choi recounted in an interview with Variety, 
I am forever a hero with my kid because I gave Tom Holland his first oyster ever in his life. That can never be done again by anyone. With the fifth season rumored, though not yet confirmed, fans of The Chef Show have their fingers and wooden spoons crossed for the return of this deliciously dynamic cooking duo.